Good morning. We welcome everyone to St. James as we celebrate this fifth Sunday of Easter. Following are the parish community announcements. Our annual Truckathon food collection is this weekend. Please bring a bag or two of groceries by 1 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Catholic Charities of Omaha, who is now in our neighborhood, is asking for food donations to help the poor in our area of Omaha, and this is how we can help them. 55 and Alive is coming this Saturday evening, May 21st. The entertainment is George and the Juniors. Please call Faye Reba for reservations by this Monday, May 16th. Our annual Growing in God's Grace Stewardship Renewal has begun, and we will be speaking more about this in the weeks ahead. Our commitment weekend will be Father's Day, June 18th and 19th. We are having a Catholic book giveaway on June 25th and 6th. If you have some Catholic books that you no longer need or want, feel free to bring them and place them in the nursery before June 19th. We will then have them available for anyone to pick up a few at a time to take home for the following weekend. As we begin this celebration, we invite you to stand and give a nod or wave to those around you. We ask anyone who has a cell phone to please silence it at this time. Thank you. This morning our celebrant is Father Tom Weisbecker, assisted by Deacon Peter Kennedy. Our opening song and gather is Canticle of the Sun, number 495. Canticle of the Sun, number 495. Verses 1 and 5. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome here this morning. Today, we, Jesus tells us to love one another. You know, we call the gospel. Uh, if we had to boil it all down, that's where we go. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. For those children ages 6 through 9 who wish to celebrate the Liturgy of the Word for children, please gather now with the leaders of the Word. children, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus, who is the Word, loves you. Listen to the Word of God and learn. Be children of the Word, leading the way for others to find Jesus. The people of St. James send you forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, 
and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So as some of you may be able to tell from <clears throat> my slightly toasted face, uh, ball season is upon us and we have been out at the ballpark uh, a little more maybe than we should. And I was reminded uh, a little bit of some of our readings today, uh, yesterday as I was coaching uh, a six and under baseball game, which is a lot of fun by the way, you should go and watch one of those sometime. Um, the antics are, are quite funny. Um, but as I was watching the game uh, and, and coaching and, and talking to one of the other coaches, uh, the other coach's son came up to him and said, Dad, is the game over yet? <laughs> and I'm thinking, it's only the first inning. <laughs> wow, maybe everybody's not having as much fun as we are. Anyway, um, that's a little bit of maybe what's going on in some of our readings today. Um, if we're paying a little bit of attention to kind of, kind of what's happening, they may kind of seem to be in a bit of juxtaposition to each other, but um, in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear uh, the story of kind of some of the different cities that Paul and Barnabas have gone to visit. And the story leaves out uh, some of the maybe more difficult trials that Paul and Barnabas had to endure. And I can only imagine uh, that at various different points, they were kind of thinking, Lord, can this journey be over yet? Uh, just like that little boy. But there can be difficult journeys in life. If we look at maybe what Paul and Barnabas went through here, uh, it simply kind of lists the different places they went and all of their successes. It's only counting their joys, right? There's that whole old song, I counted all joy, right? We're counting only the joys that they endured. But if we read through more of Acts of the Apostles and if we read some of Paul's letters, at various different places on this journey, he was literally stoned to death at one point and somehow survived that, left to die outside the city. Um, he was bitten by a poisonous snake 
uh, shipwrecked, various different other kinds of calamities that the poor man had to endure. And yet, all he's interested in is the fact that many people came to fall in love with Jesus Christ. That's pretty cool stuff. But St. Paul oftentimes talks about these kinds of things as being like an athletic event. He talks about this idea that some of this is almost like sport. It's like trying to win a race. That there are certain difficulties that will have to be endured. And certainly in the gospel passage, if we look there, Jesus is about to endure one of the most difficult of all calamities. Firstly, he's going to be betrayed by one of his own friends. And I've often said this uh, over and over again, at least to my wife anyway, that frequently it's the people that we least expect that will sometimes betray us. It's not just people from outside the church. We could accept people from outside the church, from outside our circle of friends, persecuting us. But oftentimes the most difficult times come from those whom we love, from those whom we claim to be closest to. This is one of the difficulties of marriage in many cases that unfortunately, as we used to say when I worked in the family life office, what we do when we marry is that we choose the person who's going to crucify us. It's not a very joyous look at marriage, but at some point, as we're looking at these things, again, from maybe the more athletic standpoint, there's a, uh, a certain joy in that. There's a certain joy in that, if, if we can see it. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to see. Enduring difficulties from someone we love is far easier sometimes than dealing with it from outside. Because then at least we know the person that's doing it. We have some understanding perhaps of why they're doing it. Um, and so sometimes those things can, can be a bit of a grace. But sometimes not as well. And sometimes those things are just difficulties that we have to endure. But that doesn't seem to fit in with the book of Revelation today where it's talking about Jesus taking away every pain, right? Every tear, wiping away every tear from our eyes so there'll be no more death, mourning, wailing, or pain. Well, when does that get to happen? Because we're constantly enduring the struggles of this life. When does that get to happen? Sometimes we have to realize that's not necessarily in this life that we get to do that. Not necessarily in this life, but that that's what's to come. And so as Christians, we have to continue to endure things like Murphy's Law, where if something bad can happen, it will. And it tends to happen to good Christians as well as pagans alike. It doesn't seem to matter in this world sometimes. But part of that is, again, like an athletic contest. Like an athletic contest. Having played sports my whole life, sometimes there are those difficult things that we have to do. Things like lifting weights that I always hated. Things like running in straight lines back and forth for no apparent reason at all. I never understood that. There are friends of mine who like to go run what we call ultra marathons. That sounds painful. Why would you do that to yourself? And yet we see Christians doing these kinds of things to themselves as well. Why are Paul and Barnabas continuing to run this race where they continually are persecuted, suffering terrible, terrible things from time to time? Why are they doing that? It's because of the love of the sport. Because of the love of the sport. And in this case, the sport is way more than just a sport, way more than just an athletic contest. It's the kind of thing that's worth laying your life down for. Not just to win a ball game, to win a trophy that will pass away, but to gain a trophy that will last for all eternity. The trophy that's discussed in the book of Revelation. That day when every tear will be wiped away and there will be no more sorrow. That was worth it for St. Paul and Barnabas. That's what he's talking about. That's why he counts all of these things as joy. These little victories for people that are converted to Christ and will have the ability to experience what the book of Revelation discusses, to experience the joy of Christ. But this is what true love is. True love is to endure to the very end, to be able to, again, lay my life down for the sake of the other. This is what marriage is about. 
This is what makes love worth it because I have worked and worked and worked to get there. And it's not something that we can just simply do on our own. It takes the grace of God to enter into that. It takes prayer. It takes abandoning ourselves to him to allow us to be able to get to that point. Just like a good coach, God continues to teach us through the various different parts of our lives, through the difficulties. He builds us up the way a weightlifter would build up a muscle. And he leads us to a place where we can finally abandon ourselves to his will. Recently, Pope Francis uh, canon, or beatified rather, uh, a new saint, a saint by the name of St. Charles de Foucauld. Now, St. Charles lived a rather austere and difficult life, but by the end of his life was able to say a particular prayer that I think is very helpful for understanding these Gospels today. It was the prayer of abandonment to God. And so I wish to pray that prayer for you to end today. St. Charles says, Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reservation and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, <clears throat> who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, <clears throat> one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is good to all and compassionate to all who turn to him. Confident in this truth, let us pray for our needs and those of others. For the church, the new Jerusalem, that she may prepare for her ultimate meeting with the divine spouse through faith and works of love, we pray to the Lord. For national and civic leaders, that they may care for the earth, make care for the earth a priority, we pray to the Lord. For the Ukrainian people and all who suffer from the war, grant them steadfast trust in your mercy and protection, and that their faith in God may be an enduring source of strength. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For our parish community, especially for all graduates and those moving into a new stage of life this spring, especially the St. James Seton graduates, that they may remain rooted in Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. 
for the victims of abortion, for the closing of the abortion facility within our parish boundaries, and the conversion of hearts of all involved in the destruction of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the souls of the faithfully departed, especially those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the parishioners of St. James, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the prayer requests placed in the prayer baskets, and for the special intentions we carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, let all your works give you thanks and declare your faithfulness and love. Graciously hear our prayers and answer them according to your will, for we pray them through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are gathered, please join us in singing, I Has Not Seen, number 616 in the gather, I Has Not Seen, number 616. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, <clears throat> grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending, unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mere history of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with, the blessed, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint James and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing our communion song, All Who Hunger, number 817, All Who Hunger, in your red gather hymnal, 817. Would those who are taking communion at the sick and shut in, please come forward. We, though many are one body, who share the one bread, go now to those members of our parish community who, because of illness, cannot be present with us this morning. 
Greet them in the name of the Lord and of his people gathered here. Share with them the Eucharist by the Lord and assure them that there is here a Eucharist people who are united to them in affection and in prayer. Go in our name and with our blessing. May the Lord be with you on your way. St. James Prayer for Vocations. Loving God, your people are longing to hear your word. Send laborers into your harvest, women and men on fire with your love. Send dedicated single people whose availability enables them to respond to a diversity of needs. Married couples whose relationships serve as a sign of your fidelity to your people, whose love overflows to their children and neighbors ordained priests and deacons who serve as a channel of your presence through the celebration of the sacraments, religious sisters and brothers whose witness and service brings your life to the world. May each of us, especially our young people, respond with courage and generosity to our particular vocations so that we may build your kingdom here on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. James, Apostle, friend of Jesus, pray for us. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Wish everyone a great week as we go forward. Thank you to all those who have brought something to the truckathon. If you haven't done so, they'll be out there in front of the church until one o'clock this afternoon. So feel free to bring something. And the hope certificates are being sold in the back of church after mass. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, please join us in singing, They'll Know We Are Christians, number 728, and gather. They'll Know We Are Christians, number 728.